Let's give God glory. Come on, somebody give God praise. Amen. You can have your seats. I give honor to God who's the head of my life, to our pastors, Pastor Claude and Regina Harris. Amen. To my wife, Sister Lisa Harris. My teammates in the gospel, Elder Donald Walker and Minister Danielle Harris. Thank God for them and each and every one of you. Can we thank God for our e-church and our overflow? Yes. Listen, before, because um, we have communion today, amen? So let me get through this before I give my title, though. I want to tell you that I saw a post uh, the other day that said this. It, it read, uh, we have raised a new generation that's perfected how to have church without God. Think about that. We've raised a generation that has perfected uh, how to have church without God. So my title is Heaven's Endorsement. Politicians want endorsements. <laughs> Politicians want endorsements to help them be believable. Because uh, when somebody that is trusted vouches for them, it makes them look good. Athletes want endorsements uh, because it provides extra income outside of their league salary. Um, they get perks by having endorsements. Musicians in my world, not just instrumentalists, but musicians, singers, we want endorsements for the same reason that athletes and politicians want endorsements. It certifies us in the public eye. You look as if you've arrived, you get perks. You no longer have to carry around a keyboard when you're on tour because if you're endorsed by Yamaha, they provide it for you at the venue. You don't pay what everybody else pays for the Yamaha because you're endorsed by them. You usually get 50% or more off because you're endorsed. Just makes you look good. Feels good to have endorsements, you know, endorsements. But I want to talk today about heaven's endorsement because really after it all boils down at the end of the day and whatever other colloquialism you can come up with for that, I want heaven's endorsement. And do you know what that is? Heaven's endorsement is the anointing. You ought to just say it to somebody across the, the Heaven's endorsement is the anointing. I want the anointing. I want more of the Lord's anointing in my life. And it costs. It costs. There's a lot that you've got to withstand and main, in order to maintain and receive the anointing of the Lord. One thing you need to do today, take away from this message that you need the anointing. You need to make sure you have the oil of the Lord. I will go as far as to say this. The anointing for your life, in your life, is directly connected to what you encounter for where you are headed. The anointing for your life that's in your life, right, for you is directly connected to what you've encountered for where you're headed. And it's all for the glory of the Lord. This is the origin of anointing. Uh, when it came to uh, the shepherds and their sheep, the sheep were always bothered um, and made filthy by lice and insects. And so um, these things could actually kill the sheep if they were to get into their ear and, and just do all kinds of things, infection and all kinds of things. It would kill the sheep. And so what the shepherd would do is he would pour oil on the sheep's head and it would just, it would make it too slick for, for insects and lice to hang on and they would just fall off. That's where that comes from. The anointing is actual protection. It, it's empowerment. It's a blessing to have the anointing. That right there could preach itself by itself. And here's the thing I would like to tell you. God chooses whom he wants to anoint. At different times, he chooses who he wants to anoint, and you have to be okay with it. You have to be okay with it. The oil was poured on Saul. Saul was the people's choice. Head and shoulders above all other men. Tall. He was, a, he was a, a shepherd over his father's wealthy donkeys and sheep. His father was wealthy, super wealthy. And Saul, just like another man, was a shepherd. 
but he was the people's choice. And so God allowed it. And he was anointed with a flask. Y'all following me? He was tending to his father's donkeys and sheep. And, uh, and when, he, when you get, a, let me tell you something, when you get anointed with oil, your stock goes up. Just like in the natural world, the price of oil affects our economy everywhere. And so in the spirit, when you have the oil of the Lord, your stock goes up. It changes things for you in the spirit when the oil is on you. And so the oil was on Saul, tall in stature, and his stock rose. Now he's king, and God used him to do things. And the very moment that he disobeyed, his anointing was gone. God took his hand off Saul. Meanwhile, prophet Samuel was told by God to go to Jesse's house. Now, this is what we don't talk about. We, we don't talk about Samuel's crushing. Because you got to understand that because Samuel was told to anoint Saul, he, he really felt upset and distraught that Saul went awry. He felt like this is on me because I had anointed him with the flask. And so he, you read your Bible, Samuel actually had to kill a man because of Saul's disobedience. Because Saul and them were told to kill everything. When you go to this war, don't leave anything behind. Don't bring anything with you. Kill everything. The king on down. And what did he do? He captured the king, brought the king back to where he was. I don't know if he wanted to taunt him. I don't know if what he wanted to do, have dinner with him, pick his brain, uh, get some intel. I don't know. But that's not what he was told to do. God said kill everything. And so the prophet Samuel had to kill the king. I don't know if anybody in this room has ever committed murder. We might need to know. Y'all might decide. I side, look, look, look around. See who put their head down when I said that. <laughs> but that weighs on you. I imagine if you have to kill somebody, and you you're not in the business of killing people, <laughs> that that weighs on your heart. That somebody that God told you to anoint has now gone awry. That bothers you. So Samuel was crushed. But let me tell you something about crushing. In a crushing time, in a crushing season, more anointing is made. In a crushing season, there's a greater anointing that comes forth out of you in your crushing season. And so in Samuel's crushing season, God says, go to Jesse's house. Because there you will anoint a new king. Don't take a flask this time. You need a horn. More anointing. And so he sees the lineup of Jesse's boys, and they all look, you know, formidable. They all, they're big, they're strong, kind of reminiscent of Saul, the current king. But it's not any of them. It's another shepherd boy. It's another shepherd boy that doesn't get to play on the national channels. It's another shepherd boy doing the same thing that the tall, strong shepherd boy was doing. But this one, he's not televised. He doesn't get the coverage. Uh, they don't tweet about him. They're not making posts and hashtags about him, yet he slayed a lion. He slayed a bear. He, he, it was, he was passionate about what he did for his father. He tended to his father's business as well. And when the horn went over his head, the oil poured out freely over him. Now he's protected. Now he's covered. Now he's empowered. Now he's king. And let me tell you, he was not the people's choice. He was God's choice. And there's a difference. God's hand was on his life. And the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. Yes. Let me tell you something. Oil will get an audience with the Lord. Mary Magdalene had, had stored up oil and saved up oil. And when she saw Jesus, she poured it. You don't know the costs of the oil in my alabaster box. The very oil that she had saved up and gathered over time. And you don't know what she had to do, the sacrifices she had to make to get such oil. Because if you remember in the Bible, it was very valuable. And there were some people who said, why would she waste this? But it was no waste when you know who you are in the presence of. And that very oil will get you an audience with the king. We're just talking about oil. We're talking about heaven's endorsement. I'm going to get out your way real soon. Somebody say, she had the oil. 
and her stock began to rise. There was a lady who just had a cruise of oil. All she had was a cruise of oil and the, the key is she had oil. The key is she had oil. Might not have been living in the affluent part of town, but she had oil. <laughs> ah, the odds might have been stacked against her, but she had oil. She had a cruise of oil. <laughs> Oh, man, she wasn't at the top of the financial ladder, the financial chain, but she had oil. She had oil. She honored God by blessing his manservant, and she then began to have more oil than she could put into containers. Matter of fact, as long as she could find a container, more oil was produced. You better have the oil. Anybody in here want heaven's endorsement? As long as she had containers, she had oil. Do you have heaven's endorsement? Look, look at this bottle. Pompeian extra virgin olive oil. This right here, it's a bottle of oil, but it's been consecrated. It's been prayed over. And so you might ask me, how much did this cost? And I don't know, I didn't buy this. Maybe a few dollars. But that's because you're not talking to the olive. See, I could, I could say that this was about $5, $4, whatever the cost of it was. But we're not talking to the olive. Because somewhere there is an olive thrown away in the trash. It's been smashed. It's, it's been smothered. It's been gnashed down. And oil was driven out of it. And every time that it was pushed, every time it was, it was, it was squeezed, every time it was in a tight place, every time it was in a crushing, more oil was produced. You can't get the oil and the olive remain intact. You can't get the oil and the olive remain intact. You got to be tried. And if it's the crushing seasons that produce the oil, bring out the anointing in our lives. Go through and come out with a greater anointing. Parents, get a grip of your house and anoint it. And anoint everybody in it. Now you can't do this if you ain't got no power. Because we've been you've been hearing that you need the Holy Ghost. That's what's gonna give you the power. That's what's gonna give you the boldness. Yeah. Parents, heads of household, anoint your house and anoint everybody in it. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you got power. Heaven's endorsement is honored everywhere. Heaven's endorsement, you know, some places only take certain kind of cards. Heaven's endorsement is taken everywhere because I heard the Bible say that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein, the enemy knows he can't touch the anointed and go unpunished. Cover your children with the oil of the Lord. Anoint them, talk to them, let them know that what got granddad and what seemingly got me does not have to get you. It doesn't have to continue with you. Make them understand that as I do this, I'm covering you. You do not have to go the same route that took your ancestors down. You do not have to let a generational curse continue in your life. You are now covered. You are now empowered. This is a blessing. You need the oil of the Lord. I haven't given one scripture today, but how about this one? Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim that the captives will be released. He sent me to proclaim the blind will see and the oppressed will be set free. And the time to favor you is now here the time for your favor is now here is that a good scripture you know sometimes people need scripture somebody shout glory yeah come on somebody shout glory 
yeah, 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 yeah. Gifts, callings, passions. You get them without repentance. Gifts, callings, passion, things you're passionate about. You get them without repentance. I enjoy skilled singing. Matter of fact, when the world was open, I like a good concert, you know? I don't mind hearing some skilled singing. Log on to YouTube, pull up one of my favorite singers, singing one of my favorite songs. I enjoy skilled singing. But skilled singing isn't going to uh, be what I need when my world is upside down. It's not just skilled singing. <laughs> I love a good preacher. I love to hear the word of the Lord. I love to hear the word broken down and made relative to my everyday situation. And you know, I even love uh, the gravy. Uh-huh, if you know what I'm talking about. In the Pentecostal apostolic churches, uh, when, it, when, when the preacher just looks foolish and, and he's sweating and he's doing things like, ah! I love all of that. All of that is real good. But you know what? Uh, that right there, what I'm going to need is substance because it's the substance of the word. I need somebody that has spent some time with the Lord. I need somebody that's been battle tested. I need somebody that has been with the Lord so they can tell me what thus saith the Lord for whatever situation I may be in or about to go into. That's what I need. I need somebody that's anointed. I need to get into the presence of God. I want to be ushered in, anointed singing. I need a word from the throne room, anointed teaching and preaching. You can be anointed on the usher board, parking lot ministry. You can bring peace to chaos. You can say one sentence to somebody as they're entering the door and it's confirmation before they even hear a praise team or a minister of the gospel. As someone is walking in, you can just say, today begins the best day of your life. Hope you enjoy service. And you just never know what that does. It may stick with them throughout the service and open up their spirit to the word of the Lord to receive the praise and worship that goes forth in the word that comes from the pulpit. I know it's 10 o'clock. We're moving on. We're moving on. You can be an anointed parent. You can be anointed to do the job you do, the job you get paid for weekly, bi-weekly, whatever it is, once a month. You can be anointed to do that job, and God favors you because he blesses the work of your hands. Ask God to put his super on your natural and don't stop seeking the Holy Spirit. Don't stop. Sometimes you need a refilling. Sometimes you need a refilling. Sometimes you need a refilling. Don't stop seeking the Holy Ghost. Don't stop seeking God in a new and perfect way, in a new and better way. Don't stop seeking. The church uh, has seemingly, on the outside, seemed to stop seeking. We glorify sin now. We're not supposed to glorify sin. We're not supposed to even glorify the appearance of sin. Used to be a time single folk would hang in groups of the same sex and go on trips. It's quiet. Single folks would travel together, same sex though. But now we're seeing single couples trips to Mexico. And we're taking pictures scantily clad. We're taking pictures with hands on booties and around waist, pelvic to pelvic. <laughs> And we're posting this right after our shouting videos. We're posting this, glorifying the appearance of sin. You may not have touched nobody on your trip. Well, we ain't do nothing. It was all the girls on one side and all the guys. But what are you presenting right after you, I love my church post? And then uh, this is us praise breaking. And then this is us in Consumel. Mm, doing what folks do in Consumel. We don't glorify the appearance of sin. Folks going on trips on church days with people who ain't never came to church with you. We're not seeking heaven's endorsement anymore. We're not worried about it. Somewhere along the way, we've got tired. We've got weary and well-doing. At some point, we've bit the lie that you can just do whatever makes you happy and God understands. 
You're getting tired of waiting on God to do something for you. But listen, here's another scripture. Psalm 37, 5, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do it. Yes, he he will do it. Yes, he, he will do it. If you do what you're supposed to do, God, uh, listen, I don't know if he'll do you like he does me, but he'll tap me on the shoulder and say, I'm going to do it. He just whispers it and says, I'm going to do it. I was in my car yesterday doing something I normally do on Saturdays. And the Lord just told me, he spoke something to me, and it was different this Saturday. It was different. God said something to me, and I had to pull over. I had to pull over. Couldn't even drive for a little while. Had to just pull over because I heard him say something to me so clear, so clear. And as you continue to commit your way to the Lord, God will, along the way, he'll let you know, I'm going to do it. 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 Don't get tired. Don't get weary and well doing. Don't lose your oil. Don't lose your endorsement by going backwards. Uh huh. You know, some athletes go through scandals and they lose endorsements. Politicians lose endorsements and seats and power. You don't want to do that. You don't want that to happen to you. But maintain heaven's endorsement and seek more of his oil on your life. I'm going to let you take communion in a minute. But listen, you better seek the Holy Ghost. Get back to wanting heaven's endorsement on your life. The very anointing of the Lord. Elisha was a young man following Elijah and he wanted a double portion of the anointing that Elijah walked in. Go through your crushing times trusting in the Lord, serving God and his people and come out with a greater anointing. Yes. Hey Amen. Stand to your feet. We've got to get out of here.